In my last video, I said that next time I'd discuss and show you the exact moment where my journey into the world of bees and beekeeping started. So let's get into it. A few years ago while riding my bike to work, I came across a swarm up in a tree. Actually, I came across the honeycomb first. It was down on the ground and a pool of honey had formed around the outside of it. Now, uh, like seeing someone in your home that you don't realize is there at the time you walk around a corner, it catches you off guard. You don't quite know exactly what it is initially. Then, of course, you realize. So that's how it was with me, a very similar, I guess, reaction in my mind. Like I saw this stuff and I'm like, there's no way that's honeycomb and honey. But after further inspection, of course, it was. So I got down off my bike, put it up against a tree, and of course I tasted this stuff, and it was the most delicious honey I've ever put in my mouth, I think. I've had some good, good honey since then, but at the time anyway, it was the best stuff I'd ever tasted. It was almost clear. It had a very tiny hint of yellow to it. Um, what was around there, I, I was in Arizona at the time. I was riding my bike into work on a Saturday to get some, tie some loose ends up and we were out in the middle of nowhere. There's a lot of alfalfa fields out there. There was some corn. I don't think corn produces any kind of honey or nectar, but I, I know the alfalfa does, so I think that's really what it was. And it could have been also a product of maybe some of the arid plants, like what, what grows in the desert, wildflowers and stuff. Um, however, this stuff was fantastic, and why was there just a thing of honeycomb on the ground right there right so I had to do a little little investigating and looked up in the tree to find a honeycomb or a, sorry a beehive a swarm I guess it was and it had been there long enough to collect quite a bit of honey and build a little bit of um, build a little bit of comb out I guess it was on its way to somewhere you know find a new home but I highly doubt that would have been the the end result it probably like to choose something better than that but anyway um, I ate that entire comb and you know actually tasted it while I was on the way to work and then on the way home I stopped back again and just finished it off it was so good um, but that's what sparked my interest in bees that was I don't know five or six years ago something like that and since then I've got my own hives I'm in Florida now, I was in Arizona at the time, and now I'm back in Florida, and I have a, had a place to keep them at my house, so I went off, and if you watched my previous video, I showed my actual bee purchase, where I went out to Jasper, Florida, a guy named Mike, he sells uh, beehives and bees, nukes, um, really knowledgeable, told me a lot about beekeeping and what to expect, and got me started. I got two hives from him initially, or nukes, if you want to say that two nukes from him initially and the reason I did that is because I wanted to make certain that if one hive did something that another hive didn't do then I could maybe look at the one and find out why the other one didn't do it um, for instance if one swarmed and one didn't why did that one swarm um, <clears throat> and why did the other one not swarm and then you can you know, adjust your practice accordingly um, now if you have ten right off the bat get ten um, but I wouldn't go too much over that if you're new because that's a lot to take care of. Uh, I, I think about these guys who have thousands of hives and I know they have, must have people working for them but uh, it's just a, it's a lot of work. Uh, granted you don't have to work them every day but it's a lot of work. So what I now do with my bees um, and I'm going to start pumping out some videos of what footage I have so far and I'll continue to do it as uh, months go by is I move my bees around the state of Florida and I collect honey in different locations so I've collected honey um, orange blossom honey in the cent central Florida Tupelo honey in the panhandle uh, kind of near the Apalachicola River Basin and um, Brazilian pepper honey down in South Florida that's the main focus however there's a bunch of other wildflowers that kind of take it over down there so um, I've been doing that for a few years now and I'm always looking for another nectar source. Um, something I haven't yet targeted but I will soon is uh, mangrove honey. Uh, there's some people that sell it in the nearby area. One of them uh, calls it black mangrove I think. Uh, and there's different kinds of mangroves. There's black ones, 
red ones and maybe a white one um, they all bloom I guess and they all bloom around the same time I think um, but they claim that's black mangrove I think they just call it that because the name sounds cool but then I talked to another beekeeper who was pretty big told him about the honey and the color and everything and he told me he claimed it what they said was black mangrove it wasn't black mangrove if it, if, it, if it was the color of um, what it was you know it was kind of a dark really dark color he said that it's not the color of black mangrove honey well I asked him if he collects black mangrove and if, or mangrove honey and of course he said no <laughs> so um, you know basically I think the the, the um, explanation to that is if you talk to one beekeeper about one thing and you talk to another beekeeper about the same thing, you're gonna to to have two different answers about it. Everybody has a different way of doing things. Everybody's seen something different. Everybody, anyway, everybody acts, everybody does different things. Um, another thing I've noticed about bees or beekeepers is a lot of them are pretty territorial. And uh, territorial with not only maybe where you're putting your bees, which I can understand that, but also with their knowledge. They don't, some of them aren't willing to give out some of their knowledge. And I've joined some of the beekeeper associations in, in the area here and some of them they, you'd think you'd go there oh a new guy let's tell him some stuff but it doesn't seem like that's the case they're pretty much just content with hanging out amongst themselves and not really giving too much info however there's one beekeeper association in St. John's County that's fantastic they've got a bunch of really knowledgeable individuals who just are ready to talk and give you um, you know, send 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 down to you their knowledge that they've learned over the years, and like I said in the previous video, beekeeping is like an ongoing science experiment that never ends. Um, so I'm new; I have so much to learn. These guys have been doing it for all their life. You know, some of them. I don't want to age anybody, but I'm saying I guess at least 50 years for some of them they're still learning you know there's always something to learn something I want to um, I got to mention also that uh, gave me a lot of the knowledge that I have about bees today you know some people are I hear it at, at one of the beekeeper association meetings I go to they're very opposed to people going on the internet and learning things because a lot of them are from a different uh, different time different era than maybe I am right so they look at things a little differently um, watching a video to get your knowledge to them is absurd there's no way you could find knowledge from a video the only way to get knowledge would be to read a book but I disagree um, pretty much all I've learned from beekeeping however I have joined these some of these bee, beekeeper clubs in the area um, and I've learned a lot from some of them but the majority of my knowledge has come from YouTube um, and I'm gonna name them here because I think it's important to give these people credit <laughs> So number one, the first person I came across when I was looking up bees, when I first started to, um, to learn about them, uh, was Wall's Bee Man, <clears throat> Tim Durham. He's the one who's give you, give you a bunch of jokes. Um, he's in Mississippi or something, but he's a, he's a wealth of knowledge, and I, I wish he would make more videos. He kind of slowed down. Um, and then there's Barnyard Bees. Watched that guy a lot. He gave me a lot of good knowledge. Um, videos are kind of long and you gotta kind of sift through to find the info you're looking for but uh, a lot of knowledge is conveyed on that channel uh, JC's bees pretty clear and concise showed you a lot of tips and tricks things to do to feed um, and take care of your bees um, I really enjoy that channel I've actually purchased some items he's talked about in there that have helped me out with my beekeeping um, and then there's a skinny bee man from little bits honeybees I think is what it's called um, I think I learned well his his videos on uh, something I watched a lot of his videos on were uh, I think splitting and um, learned about doing some splits from him and then Devin Ron he's uh, his channel is called Devin Ron R-A-W-N he's up in Ontario southern Ontario and he is by hands down my favorite to watch on YouTube however he stopped making videos and I think he made a post about why he doesn't um, and it had something to do with people's comments which if you're gonna be making videos you can't really care about anybody <laughs> except yourself number one um, 
Now, of course you care about people if you're trying to convey your knowledge to them. However, the ones that want to talk about what you're doing wrong, you can't let that get to you. I wish he would uh, get back in the game because his videos were fantastic and I want to see more. Um, he does take pictures and put them on Instagram. I, I, Instagram? Yeah, Instagram every now and then. He takes some really neat pictures of maybe bees on flowers or stuff like that, but I want the videos again. Um, then there's Paul Kelly from the University of Guelph, I think is how you say it, in um, Canada. And it's the Guelph Honey Bee Research Center, RE Center. Center. Um, those, those videos are so educational. If you start uh, in beekeeping, I highly recommend watching all those videos. Just one after another, you can sit there and binge watch them. You can learn so much from that guy and his videos and then the various people in their videos. I think there's students involved as well, but they do an awesome job. The footage is fantastic. Um, keep in mind, for me, I'm in Florida, they're up in Canada. There's a lot of differences, but then again, they're honeybees, there's a lot of similarities. So I really, that's that's probably number two on my list. It's hard to have have favorites, but man, they, they have a lot of good knowledge on there. And then there's the honey, a national honey show, that's out of the UK, I believe. and they've got these long seminars that you can watch like an hour long sometimes longer and they've got different beekeepers who are going around talking about their uh, experiences and um, it's usually focused on a certain subject so really good knowledge from that and then Ian Stepler from a Canadian Canadian beekeepers blog again somebody that's too well 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 away from where I am keeping bees however bees are bees a lot of similarities um, I don't have to, of course, winter my bees indoors like he does, but a lot of good knowledge can come from him. Um, he's living it day to day, living on the farm with his bees. I think he maintains about 100 or 1,500 hives or something like that. I almost forgot another couple individuals. I didn't want to leave them out because they uh, played, a, played a large part in what, what I know about bees today. Um, one of them, I'll start with this because a couple of them came from this, was the Beekeeping Today podcast. I was looking for a podcast about bees, found it, and these guys, there's a couple other ones out there, but this is hands down the best because they bring on, they've been involved, well, one of them's been involved in beekeeping for a long time. I think he may have been a professor at Ohio State University or somewhere in Ohio and has a lot of connections through that. And because of that, people were willing to come talk and uh, he brings a lot of, a lot of cool, I'll call it talent. Um, into their podcast. One of those guys was Dr. Tom C. I think he's a doctor. I'll just call him Tom Seeley. He's a professor at Cornell and he studies bees. And one of the cool things he's done is he wrote a book about hunting bees in the wild. I haven't yet done it, but I will surely do it because I'm fascinated by that. Another guy they brought on was um, Samuel Ramsey, Dr. Sam Ramsey, uh, or Dr. Bugs, as his YouTube channel is called. And maybe he goes by out in uh, his uh, professional world. I don't know. But, um, He's a, I think he's an entomologist, wealth of knowledge on, on bugs, and uh, he's got a lot of cool stuff to say about bees as well. And then last who I mentioned in my video last time was Paul Stamets. He studies fungus and how, how it interacts with other living organisms. And he's done, I think there's a talk I saw one time about him discussing bees and how he witnessed bees eating a fungus out in the, uh, in the forest somewhere, taking it back to their hives, and I think that plays a large role in some of his research. But I've seen it too over on a wood pile I have over there. Um, it's a rotting wood pile. I saw some bees just collected on top of this fungi. I don't know what they were doing, but they were certainly licking it up. I could see their tongues getting after it. So I think there's something to that. But these are just another couple individuals I almost forgot to mention. Um, of course, there's a ton of other resources I've, I've used along the way, um, and then a lot of other beekeepers on YouTube, but maybe it was a, a one-off. I saw something here on one video. They made one video about something. And I'll give you an example of that. There's one guy who made a video about um, Texas A&M University. They have their anthropology school. Well, they have a card catalog. The guy's name is Dr. Von Bryant. He didn't make this video, but somebody went in and filmed him. But Dr. Von Bryan at the University, at, or sorry, Texas A&M University's Anthropology School has a card catalog of pollens. So if you want to send a honey in, you can send a honey sample in, and I think it costs about $75 for a sample to be tested. They'll break down the pollen, the pollen content and tell you what percentage it is of 
tupelo, what percentage is of orange blossom, or so on. So, um, again, that was just from a video I saw on YouTube where a guy just, for some reason, oh, you know what, I believe that guy actually was a beekeeper, and he had some other beekeeping videos, but just some random, not too many videos of uh, any significance. However, this one stood out in my mind, and I've actually, because of him, sent stuff to Texas A&M to be tested, some of my stuff, just because I'm curious to know what the breakdown of the pollen content is in the different areas I target. Like I said, I'm in Florida and I'll go down and target orange blossom, target tupelo, target Brazilian pepper. Uh, I'll soon target uh, black mang or mangrove when they start blooming. Uh, but back to why this all, this all, why this rabbit hole started to get dug was because one day in Arizona, I was riding my bike to work and came across a honeycomb on the ground and ended up eating the whole thing. <clears throat> and of course, the bees that created it were sitting there right above me in the tree. Um, I didn't stay there too long because they started coming out after me, um, which I don't have any footage of, but it's because of that that I'm into bees. Now, while working at that same job, the, the campus there had a... Uh, this also added to my my interest in bees there was two beehives on the campus not there were just feral beehives one was in an irrigation box and one was in a, a water pipe and when i get to work i'd get everything situated and then i'd make a couple laps around or make a lap around the campus just get a little exercise get the juices flowing and i'd pass the irrigation box and it had bees coming in and out i passed the water pipe it had bees coming in and out and this water pipe wasn't but a six inch maybe eight but i don't think eight i'm thinking six inch water pipe and the bees were in there for quite some time well of course arizona's hot so come summertime we had there's a stint where we had 115 degrees six percent humidity for like two weeks straight and the bees absconded and that was my chance so i went home or on a friday uh, collected some tupperware and i came back with some uh, rubber gloves because I knew it was going to be a sticky situation and I went to the irrigation box and took out some of the honeycomb that had honey in it I went to the water um, water pipe took out some of the honeycomb that had honey in it and I went to the house and smashed it all up and I strained it all out through like some cheesecloth kind of stuff that I got from Walmart it wasn't really cheesecloth but it was uh, some kind of fabric that resembled it and I did a blind taste, uh, first I tasted it, it was fantastic. I couldn't believe how good this stuff was. Then I did a blind taste test for my wife. Um, I made her try three honeys. The one that I extracted or squashed out or stole, um, and then two store-boughts from, I think it was a grocery store called Winco out there. And I can't remember which kind those were, but they were just two store-bought honeys that I bought. Of course, at the time I didn't know anything about honey. Now that I know a little bit more, I probably would have purchased something that may have been uh, something local, something not produced in Argentina or Uruguay or something like that, but I don't know what I purchased. Either way, my honey won hands down from a blind taste test. Then I took it to work and let some people try it there and they couldn't believe how good it was. So um, that's what got it all, you know, sparked my interest in beekeeping. At the time, living in Arizona, I didn't have any place to keep the bees, but once I moved here to Florida, I got a little bit of spot, you know, out here in the backyard to, uh, to maintain them however because I'm moving around the country or around the state now I don't usually keep them at my house I usually have them on a piece of land somewhere um, in between or like say for instance right now they're sitting in the orange groves waiting for today's December February uh, January February waiting for February for the orange blossoms to start blooming again and I'll collect the honey off them probably March sometime maybe end of March once I collect the honey off them they're heading to the panhandle so I'll take them up there and I'll put them in the woods so they can get uh, get situated kind of learn the territory and get ready for Tupelo but um, that'll continue until the end of Tupelo and then they'll head down to southeast Florida piece of land down there is cattle land a lot of uh, kind of marshy land a little bit of marshy land there's a lot of drainage canals going on out there it's one prevalent weed called alligator weed I think it's another invasive as is Brazilian pepper but um I'll keep my bees down there until I extract around the end of November once the, the blooms are gone and all the little Brazilian peppers have formed. I'll get my bees and I'll take them back to the orange grove. But I uh, forget when the uh, forget when mangrove is, but I'll get down there during the mangrove season sometime. I just have to find a piece of land first before I can. You can't just go sticking your bees on the side of the road somewhere. You gotta 
get permission from somebody that's near the source. So that's what my goal is now. I've got to find somebody that's got a source of lots of mangrove trees where I can go dump these things off. Um, but I'm going to continue, continue my journey. I'll bring you along for the ride. Hope you're enjoying it. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't. And uh, we'll see you next time.